So hi everyone, my name is Ekta Jaiswal. I am from the Legal Swan firm, where we tackle bullying, harassment and discrimination uh, with comprehensive solutions around it. Our mission is to promote diversity, equity, inclusion and belonging. Today, I am discussing child sexual exploitation and abuse with Joy Mateka. She's a legal officer at Kenya Alliance for Advance Advancement of Children an expert in children rights, human rights, and online child sexual exploitation and abuse, OCSEA. Uh, Joy, would you like to add anything more to your introduction? Um, I think that was a very comprehensive um, introduction. That is exactly who I am. I am a children's lawyer working in the area of um, sex, sexual exploitation against children in Kenya with a keen interest on online child sexual exploitation, but not to mean that I do not handle other areas of the law. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joy. So this initiative is uh, to uh, gain experience about what is happening in other countries. Our aim is to raise awareness about human rights and of course, normalize discussions on uh, you know, uh, taboo topics, which we don't freely talk about. So I'm hoping, uh, with Joy's experience, we get to learn a lot what's happening in Kenya. So Joy, my first question to you to begin with is, what are the key child safety laws and regulations in Kenya to protect children from sexual exploitation? Um, in Kenya, we have quite a robust um, legal framework with uh, the supreme law of the land being the constitution. Our constitution has a whole article, Article 53, that is dedicated to children and talks about children's welfare and child protection. So we have the Constitution of Kenya. Then we have the Children Act of 2022. Last year in July, we had a new act come into force. Previously, we were using the Children's Act of 2001 that had so many of the things that we are tackling. Up, um, we are currently tackling, for example, online child sexual exploitation, radicalism that was not incorporated in the Children's Act. So we have the Children's Act of 2022. Uh, we also have a very key act known as the Sexual Offenses Act that um, penalize, criminalizes um, offenses of criminal nature and uh, has um, sections that are key to children and not just children um, who are sexually abused in the um, in the physical space but also in the online space. It talks about child pornography at quite um, a, a good length and depth. We also have um, because I'm keen on online child sexual exploitation and abuse. We have the Computer Misuse and Cyber Crimes Act that also has section 24 talking about child pornography again. So I could mention quite a number, but those are the key laws that um, talk about child protection in the community. Maybe a last one, we have the Basic Education Act that caters for children when they are in school. So most of our laws, you'll find that they have a section or two that touch on children, but the ones that I have mentioned are the ones that are truly dedicated to child protection in Kenya. Great, thank, thank you. you. So uh, you've talked about online exploitation and that's my next question. Uh, what role does technology play in child safety and protection against trafficking and sexual exploitation? Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to acknowledge that just like most caregivers, um, Parent, that includes parents, guardians, teachers, even myself. Technology has found us in an interesting place where on one side we're learning from technology, it's really improving our lives, but on the other end, we are having harm occasioned through technology. So today we choose not really to focus on the bad things that we are already aware that are happening in the internet, but to look at how can we use the internet to protect our children and to protect even um, um, yeah, to safeguard the space, the internet space that when they are accessing it. So the first way in uh, which the internet comes in to protect children is that we have online resources where you can get information on how, as a child, you can remain safe. Other than accessing the online resources as a child, parents, caregivers, teachers, and people who are interested in learning 
can access these online resources through the internet uh, platforms. Still on the same breath, it's through the internet that we have online reporting tools. For example, the very popular platforms in Kenya, we have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Um, those are the ones that I'm familiar with. This digital world keeps evolving daily and daily and there are new applications. So yeah, so we find the reporting tools on the internet space where children and caregivers can report suspicious or even cases of um, online abuse and not just online because we have online counseling services that can also be accessed in the internet space. So um, having mentioned helplines, um, in Kenya we have a children's helpline that is 116 which can be accessed by anyone in Kenya. It is free and 24 hours. So other than offering the voice support to children, they also offer email, chat, uh, internet-based support to persons who might be facing um, child complete child uh, related issues they can be supported through um the internet space uh other than those they can't think to yeah those are the ones that i can think of right now thank yes, you I if think another one comes up i'll definitely use sure. it sure i think you touched on already technology because that was my next question to you do you have any tech uh technological tools or solutions that you re would recommend uh parents so i think you've already covered the helpline and uh it's great uh that it is free and it's available to uh everyone um mm -hmm. so what has been your experience uh of uh you know uh people using this helpline number um interesting to note is that i worked at the helpline years ago and um the most unique thing about our my experience at the helpline is that it is adults who con who contact the helpline more than children. Okay. You'd expect because it's a children's helpline that children are contacting their counselors, support services. But in the real sense, we have concerned adults contacting the helpline. Maybe some of the reasons which I can allude to is uh, accessibility to gadgets. For you to call, you need a phone, and maybe not all children have a phone. Right. Um, so that lack of accessibility to the service. Yeah. So that ha that has been my experience. Over the years, we moved from just receiving calls to now this advent of online child sexual, sexual exploitation, where now these cases do not require you to report about a URL, I mean, a website. You need somewhere where you can type. And we have um, at the helpline, there's a WhatsApp number where children are able to share whatever link it is and uh, uh, photos or videos they find uncomfortable online and they can get supported. And also speaking to the same, in Kenya, we have um, the national the regulatory authority when it comes to matters communication is called the Communication Authority of Kenya. The Communication Authority has a portal known as the KESAT, Kenya Computer Incidents Response Team. So that is where if you come across any cases of child abuse when you're interacting with the internet space, you can make a report there. So that is a mechanism or a platform that has been um, facilitated by the communication authority simply saying the government to do that and also um, because it's not everyone who can be able to access or even has that knowledge through uh, both state and non-state actors there's been deliberate efforts to build the capacity of children officers who are situated in the villages in the sub counties to be able to support these children uh, make a report to the um to the police station support the police because this is really new to mm -hmm. be able to take up yes yes wow that's very nice so um um joy so as an expert on child rights i if i may call you an expert uh, I think, uh, what are the best practices, any best practices you recommend in promoting children rights? Um, compare what we do in Kenya or just generally? Uh, both views would be great. 
Okay, so best practices um, is, uh, I, let me uh, make reference to our Kenyan situation. We have what we call the CPMIS, the Child Protection Information Management System. This is a platform by the government through the Directorate of Children's Services that collects all the data about children in Kenya. So when a case is reported in the further side of, I mean, the deepest pockets of Kenya, it is recorded in the CPIMS, and um, it can show you who handled the case, what service was referred, did the child get that support? If not, what has been done, it has some sort of escalation and accountability, which I find very noble. Um, it began as a pilot project, but right now all the 47 counties in Kenya are having that. And the beauty about that is at a click of a button, you're able to know um, what are the most prevalent cases in refugee camps? What are the most prevalent cases, uh, or rather what is the most prevalent form of abuse affecting girls between the age of six and 10? And you know data is very key when it comes to programming because without data, you're unable to address most, if not all of these social issues. So um, that's, Information management system, the CPMS, uh, is one of um, of the very good things that I think the world should emulate. When you look at the space on children, we we have managed to cover most of the things in law. So, as I had mentioned uh, earlier, we have a new Children Act of 2022 that captured most of the things that we were battling with. So. Our laws are quite progressive. Whenever there's an issue, you find the laws are being amend amended, others are being uh, drafted, just to ensure that children are well, well covered uh, within the law. Yes. Okay. Great, thank you. Anything else you want to share with us, Joy? Yes, definitely. I, I am so proud of this Children Act, so you'll hear a bit more about it. The other uh, advancement that we've made as a nation, which I, coming from Africa, where Kenya is situated, we now acknowledge the intersex child as the third gender in Kenya. This has been a huge struggle um, because from birth, a child could only be identified as a boy or a girl. Then uh, upon having censors and several cases coming up, um the new children act has come to address that and now we acknowledge that you can be a boy you can be a girl or you can be an intersex, be intersex. yes you that's, can be an intersex that, child. that's progressive that's very very progressive very progressive okay um yes. thank uh thank you i think uh all the thoughts that you've shared with us today and the best practices i i'm sure that will undoubtedly benefit many uh, uh, people and uh, thank you for your time thank you so much Mama.